When you hear about somebody passing away, you say that's, you know, it's a terrible thing, but when it strikes home, eats you up. But luckily we had a big family and if we just had uh, Dean Paul, then it would be worse than it is. This is San Gorgonio Mountain. While not the tallest mountain in the state of California, it is the tallest in Southern California where it rises to a peak of 11,503 feet. However, despite not being particularly striking in appearance during the summer, it is the only mountain in Southern California with a summit a significant distance above the tree line. But in the winter, with its bright white snow cap, the mountain is noticeable from hundreds of miles away. Mount Gorgonio hosts the longest recorded line of sight in the contiguous United States. However, this beautiful piece of God's creation magically, or should I say tragically, transforms to become invisible at night or in bad weather. And for that reason, it holds a dark secret. A secret that millions, perhaps billions of people around the world have never heard before. But for two members of the iconic Las Vegas Rat Pack, they came to find out Mount San Gorgonio's secret all too well. And now you're about to learn its dark secrets too. 6th, 1977 was an unusually cold day in Palm Springs, California. Natalie, or Dolly as she was known, and her best friend Ann Carboni, both elderly widows, had big plans for the weekend. They were going to fly in a private Learjet to Las Vegas to see Frank Sinatra's first opening night performance at Caesars Palace, and of course do a little gambling. Well, honestly, probably a lot of gambling, considering the limitless resources Dolly had at her disposal. Because Dolly was not only the biggest fan of the Rat Pack crooner Frank Sinatra, who she has seen live more times than she can count, but in addition to being Frank's biggest fan, seeing Frank live is something Dolly has done her entire life, since she is also the woman who actually gave life to the blue-eyed crooner and one of the greatest music icons the world has ever known. Because you see, Dolly was Frances Albert Sinatra's mother. In preparation for his historic 1977 Caesars Palace debut, Frank had chartered a Learjet LR24B operated by Jet Avia to fly his mom and her friend Ann Carboni on the hour-long journey from Palm Springs, California to Las Vegas for his show that night. And Frank spared no expense for his mother. He booked two luxury suites for the two octogenarian ladies and reserved front row seats to all his shows. The show was scheduled to begin at 9 p.m. that evening. Of course, Dolly and Ann were chauffeured to the Palm Springs Airport in style and boarded the private Learjet piloted by Don Weir and Gerald Foley. According to the NTSB report at 4.56 p.m. local time, the air traffic controller requested the pilots report back when they reached 9,000 feet and clear them for takeoff. And soon, Dolly and Ann were gleefully on their way to Las Vegas to an altitude of 9,000 feet as the ATC instructed. However, ultimately, that altitude, among a dozen other errors by both the pilots and ATC controllers, would soon culminate in an unimaginable tragedy for the Sinatra family. At over 11,500 feet, San Gorgonio Mountain is one of the highest peaks in the continental United States. However, on this cold winter evening, San Gorgonio Mountain was covered by several feet of freshly fallen snow, and it was still snowing, obscuring its view. The normal procedure for aircraft arriving and departing from Palm Springs Airport is to fly around the mountain, not over it. But for some reason that night, the crew never altered course from the time of takeoff and flew directly into the mountain before Palm Springs could even hand the flight over to Los Angeles Center which is responsible for the air traffic once they left Palm Springs. Additionally, back in 1977, there was no radar covering that mountain range and it was strictly a visual flight rule environment until the flight would have been visible to Los Angeles Center. 
The NTSB report stated that it was difficult to rationalize how the crew concluded that the runway heading was to be maintained and not account for the steep San Bernardino Mountains. According to the NTSB report, the aircraft crashed on San Gorgonio Mountain, striking the face at a 30 to 35 degree slope, with a wreckage path generally parallel to the slope's face. At the time of impact, the Learjet was in a 12 degree climb, and the wreckage was strewn over a half mile, disintegrating on impact. There was no fire, and sadly no survivors. Both pilots, Frank's mom and her friend, all perished in the crash. According to the NTSB report, the probable cause was the flight crew's misinterpretation of IFR clearance rules and the controller's failure to detect the deviation of the aircraft from its flight route and the flight crew's failure to recognize their proximity to the high terrain. There was no flight or data recorders on the Learjet. Meanwhile, backstage at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, As he waited for his mother's arrival, Frank was becoming nervous, as her flight was now more than an hour late, and the limo driver he'd sent to the airport was scheduled to pick up another VIP client soon after. So with just two hours before his Big Caesars Palace debut, with dinner guests waiting downstairs, Frank called yet again to a friend in Palm Springs, who confirmed that he'd indeed driven Dolly and Ann directly to the airport and to the plane, and stayed there until they lifted off at 4.56pm. But then just before Frank was about to walk on stage, he learned about the missing jet and its passengers, understanding his mother may indeed have been killed. But while Frank was visibly shaken backstage, being the consummate professional that he was, Frank still performed the matinee and evening shows as planned. The crowds at both shows remembered that Frank performed impeccably. No one in the crowd had any hint of his concern. Meanwhile, offstage in between shows, Frank was a mess as he waited quite impatiently as you would imagine for any news. Meanwhile, teams of search and rescue personnel searched the mountain but were hindered by driving snow. Unable to continue the search for the night, the 35 searchers spent a frigid night in tents on San Gorgonio Mountain. The search resumed the next morning, but in waist-deep snow, the searchers struggled to move, let alone walk or hike. So as they struggled in the powdery snow, they also looked above for any fresh damage to the trees on the mountain, but found nothing. Then finally, on Sunday, January 9, three days after the Learjet disappeared, a searcher in a helicopter spotted a coat hanging in a tree. A few feet away, he saw a Mumu-style dress hanging in another tree. He then saw luggage scattered about on the snow-covered ground, followed by the remains of the Learjet. Once the news had been confirmed to Frank, it was then that he canceled the remainder of his shows, as his understanding fans shared his grief with him. Oh, and one last thing. Dolly had always traveled with a box full of very expensive jewelry given to her by Frank over the years. The box was never found. Dean Paul Martin Jr. was born Dean Paul Crochetti Jr. on November 17, 1951. In addition to being the son of one of the most famous men on earth, he was also an American pop singer and film and television actor, as well as a member of the California Air National Guard. Martin's parents were of course the singer and entertainer Dean Martin and his second wife Jeannie Baker. Dean Paul was the fifth of Dean Martin's eight children and Jeannie's eldest son. He attended the Urban Military Academy in Brentwood, California, but when he was young, he was encouraged toward a singing career. At the age of 13, he joined Desi Arnaz Jr. and Billy Hinchy in the pop group Dino, Desi, and Billy, which had a few minor hits in the U.S. in 1965, which entered the U.S. Billboard Top 30 twice with I'm a Fool at number 17, and Not the Loving Kind at number 25. But as he matured, he began to go by his given name, Dean Paul, instead of the nickname Dino in his late teens. He eventually became a successful tennis player who competed in the qualifying competition for Wimbledon, as well as an accomplished actor. 
He co-starred with Ali McGraw in the 1979 film Players, starring as a professional tennis player, for which he was nominated for a Golden Globe Award as New Star of the Year. He later starred in the TV series Misfits of Science, which aired during the 1985-1986 television season. The short-lived series also co-starred Future Friends star Courtney Cox. His final film appearance was in Backfire, co-starring Karen Allen and Keith Carradine, which was released in 1988 after Martin's death. The film was dedicated to his memory. Martin, an avid pilot, obtained his pilot's license at age 16 and became an officer in the California Air National Guard in 1980. After that, he entered active duty service for officer training in the U.S. Air Force under the Palace Chase Program, permitting direct entry into the Air National Guard or Air Force Reserve. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant and completed pilot training at Columbus Air Force Base in Mississippi in 1981. Following transition training in the F-4 Phantom II jet fighter at Homestead Air Force Base in Florida, he was assigned to the California Air National Guard's 196th Tactical Fighter Squadron, 163rd Tactical Fighter Group at March Air Force Base, California, flying the F-4C Phantom II as a part-time Air National Guardsman. Eventually, he rose to the rank of captain. However, Dino's future would soon take a tragic turn, as once again the Rat Pack family menace that was Mount San Gorgonio would rise, literally to snatch his life from what could have been. On March 21, 1987, just 10 years after Frank Sinatra lost his mother Dolly to the very same mountain, Captain Dean Paul Dino Martin Jr., 35, and co-pilot and Rio Captain Raymond Ortiz, 39, were killed when their F-4 Phantom flew inverted into the mountain at about an elevation of 3,750 feet and at an estimated speed of 560 miles per hour in a blinding snowstorm. An investigation by the Air National Guard and the Air Force indicated that Martin may have become disoriented or experienced vertigo in a fierce snowstorm and did not hear the command from a controller at Ontario Airport to change directions to avoid the peak. The report released by the Air Force Safety Inspection Center at Norton Air Force Base said Martin went into a steep dive just before he discovered that he was heading into a blinding snowstorm. Information released in the investigation indicated that the aircraft had not malfunctioned and that the two men had made no effort to eject before the crash. According to a transcript of Tower Communications, the unidentified Ontario controller frantically tried to find alternative courses for Martin and the pilots of two other fighter planes, flying information to help them avoid the worsening weather conditions. Two minutes before the crash, the group's leader asked to take the three planes above the 12,000-foot level and out of the storm, but he was refused because of heavy commercial air traffic in the area. Although publicly Dean Martin Sr. put on a good face, privately it is said that the loss of his son took a toll on him both mentally and physically the remainder of his life, until his death in 1995 at the age of 78 from lung cancer. So how many of you out there knew about this tragic story of the Rat Pack and the Mountain? I knew about Dean Jr.'s crash, but I have to admit I never heard about Dolly Sinatra. So please be sure to let me know down in the comments below. But uh, more slowly, we speak of him, we talk, we drink to him, you know.